This is a time for us to spend time together here at the Deliverance Church, Eldoret, Kenya. And we are looking at the topic, spiritual warfare, but precisely we are addressing the topic, dealing with the evil foundations. Dealing with the evil foundations. Dealing with the evil foundations. And I look straight away into the book of uh, Psalm 11, verse number 3. What can the righteous accomplish when truth pillars are destroyed in the law and the order collapses? I've read that from the Passion Translation. We are looking at the foundations which are very important to us as we engage the study. I want us to look at the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter number 6. And I look quickly at verse number 10. Ephesians 6, verse number 10. The Bible begins by saying, For the rest, brethren, be strong in the Lord, and in the might of his strength. Put on the panoply of God, that we may be able to stand against the edifices of the devil. Because our struggle is not against blood in the flesh, but against principalities, against authorities, against the universal lords of this darkness, and against spiritual power of wickedness in the heavenlies. I've read from a translation called the Derby Translation. And I begin by quoting from some people that have done spiritual warfare. You know, the King James says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mighty. Put on the whole armor of God. That we may be able to stand against the wells of the devil. There are a few things we need to remind ourselves. Number one, three things that a Christian fighter should consider before going to war with principalities and the powers. I'm just reading something here. He should study to understand that. He is not going to confront mean soldiers, but very advanced professional intellectuals who are very legalistic. He should know his confronting powers that established evil foundation, ancestral stools, Shrines and altars, etc. He should also know that they are the same spirits, are the sponsors and the supervisors of demons that fight us on a daily basis, both in our physical dreams and the spiritual realms. You are beginning to understand it is no simple task we are talking about here. You are dealing with very highly professional intellectuals who have a lot of laws to apply. They have established evil foundations, ancestral tools, where they issue orders from, where they are ruling, shrines that you have in the village, Altars in the mountains, in the lakes, in the rivers, 
in the forest. Number two, I continue reading. A Christian soldier must not approach this most advanced army with a baby or a soft heart. And serious Christians cannot win the battle with the demonic rulers and authorities. What I'm saying here is that this battle is not meant for Christians who is not knowledgeable in the things of the Spirit. To be strong in the Lord is to say that he should not be an easily discouraged Christian, but a well-determined fighter. He should be a, a courageous fighter hoping to wish and to win even in the face of seeming defeat. This is because these senior demons never accept defeat. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? What we are handling is not for people who are eating ice cream. It's not for people who have come in because they feel I can take a snack. The example of this is Satan, who is the one of the principalities that the Christian is to confront. You are directly engaging your enemy. Our Lord Jesus fasted and prayed for 40 days. Nevertheless, such a prayer with the fasting did not deter Satan from tempting Jesus. Are you hearing that? After Jesus fasted 40 days, and Jesus is Lord, Jesus is greater than all of us. After he left him for a while, they met on the cross. Though Jesus won, but not without being wounded. It is a serious battle. And if there is anything you'll ever value, value the lessons we'll share this week. Number three, a Christian is to be strong in the power of God. He is expected to be loaded in the power of God to enable him to do the seemingly impossible. So the Lord is talking to us to get prepared for the impossible, casting out demons in the flesh or environmental demons requires the use of the name of Jesus. But for other categories, there may be required faith, prayer, with the fasting, etc. This is the different, this is different from the case of demonic authorities. There is need for the strong manifestation of power in the presence of the Holy Spirit. And like the messengers that we fight on a daily basis with little or no difficulties. Well, against demonic authorities requires the full backing of the Spirit. We need to be prepared to encounter powers we have never imagined. So for you to experience recovery, you need to begin to have an understanding that it is serious business we are handling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. I want us to find uh, uh, verses that are uh, in the following scriptures. The Bible says, Joel 2 and 24. The floors will be full of corn. And the fats will overflow with new wine and oil. When you begin to hear words like corn, that means bread. 
And to us, the bread here is the bread of the word. It is the revelation we are getting. Then the Bible says there will be new wine and oil. Wine represents the Holy Spirit. Oil represents the Holy Spirit. We need the help so that we can recover. Verse number 25. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. The canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. You will eat and be plenty, be satisfied, and praise the name of Jehovah your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And the people will never be ashamed again. This is a season when God is doing and bringing back restoration. Restoration of the word. Restoration of revelation. Restoration in the area of spiritual warfare. God is beginning to handle our personal lives, our marriages, our finances, our careers. God is restoring the church. And I want to say to the church, please treat what you are hearing as very crucial. Some of us are under serious attacks from evil altars. We present lots of things. And lots of these things are disturbing. We have spent a lot of money treating our sick bodies. We have seen every doctor ever known. We have been to the banks. We are servicing loans and we have dug ourselves into very deep pits. We will never come out. Some of us have lost resources. We have lost husbands. We have lost wives. We have lost marriages. We have lost properties. We are where we are not supposed to be. The locusts have dealt with us. We have been eaten by canker worms, caterpillars, and the palmer worms, and the great army of destruction. So if you take it lightly, you are the one who is going to suffer. Some of us, we are delayed in getting married because of the foundations that have been affected. And some of us, if we are not careful, Already the enemy has attacked us through dreams. We have been poisoned. Somebody has planted things in our bodies. Women are carrying vibroids. People are carrying tumors and cancers in their bodies. People are in great pain. Marriages have been scattered. Finances have been swallowed. We are having leaking pockets. We will never get to our destiny. Many of us lost the grip and the direction of life because the enemy touched us. That's why you remained with the standard 8 education. That's why you remained with the form 4 education. That's why today you don't have your parents. The enemy killed them. He took them. That's why you are buried people, your own children. You are buried your own husband. That's why you have gone over 20 churches. And you are not aware. The locusts have been attacking you. The palmer worms and the canker worms. And you have never been satisfied. You are starving. Your time for deliverance must come. You have weapons of the word. 
The word of God. You have the weapon of the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. You have the Holy Spirit. Who will help you to pray different prayers. Put your hand on your chest. Say, Lord, in the spirit of humility. I renounce religion. I renounce pride and arrogance. Soften my heart. Soften my heart to receive your word. Open my spirit, man. Destroy altars that are built by myself. Lord, I humble myself before you. And I request restoration, 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 restoration of anything that has been stolen from me in Jesus' name. Take it serious. Don't think you are just listening to another preacher. This message has been burning in my heart for a while. What is a foundation? A foundation is a state of being founded. It is an act. It's an establishment of something. Something founded. It is an act. It is an establishment. The Bible has a lot to talk about foundations. Do you know why you and me need to be helped? Brothers and sisters, do you know why we need to check our foundations? Just keep looking at me. Some of us, in our dreams, we have eaten with the dead people. We have found ourselves in parties we did not know who invited us. At the times, we have been eating in the dreams. And a lot of eating has taken place. Now, this is why you discover people have got sicknesses that doctors cannot diagnose. There are women who have carried false pregnancies for many years. There is uncontrollable fear in our lives. Hindrances in all the things we want in our lives. The simple word is hindrances. Umenyimwa, umesuiriwa. There is multiple frustrations. Frustrations in education, in career, in marriage, frustrations in finances. There is a lot of delays on regular things we are supposed to have. You have delayed five years, ten years, fifteen years, twenty years. You see, when you get married and you are uh, at forty, when will you ever give birth? When will you ever raise the children? Some of us have suffered near success always. You are about there and that thing is taken away from you. Some of you are dreaming of your village and your hometown. You dream going back to the school you used to attend. Some of you have had sexual dreams at the times or always. I've had so many women call me. They say there is a person who comes and uh, stays with me. And, I, and that person leaves me defiled and polluted. We call them spirit husbands. Spirit wives. There are those of you that are dreaming of water. All the time you see is water. Rivers, lakes, and oceans. Some of you are nursing babies or you are getting pregnant in your dream. 
A sister called me and said, Pastor, I go to a very good church. I have been dreaming that I've given birth to a child. You know, that is a very serious demonic attack on your foundation. Others have been made barren by demons. There is nothing you can do with your life, with your money, with your marriage, with your resources. You are so barren and dry. Some of you have been visited and you have had a miscarriage. Hey. A sister called me and said, there is an old woman I saw in a dream. She touched my womb and I've lost the three pregnancies. Some of us, we have had very bad dreams after we have been prayed for. Ndiyo sasa ida mapepo inainuka sawa sawa. Poor, but counting money in the dream. You see yourself counting a lot of money and that money is not with you. You are hated for nothing. People hate you. Your husband hates you. Your wife hates you. Your children hate you. The community hates you. The office, you are hated. Some of us are suffering from lustful and immoral thoughts. Again and again, I hear people calling me, Pastor, I am masturbating. I'm a man. Women have called me, I am masturbating. Listen to me. Listen to me. There is persistent problems after deliverance. Bad dreams after much prayers. Seeing dead relatives in the dream. Your mother visits you. Your grandfather visits you. Your sister whom you were twins with. She comes back to you in a dream. Oh my God. Some of you are being chased by things that look like people, that look like animals. They are called masquerades. Masquerades. You are always forgetting anything you dream. Now, let me say something here. Anytime you have a dream, you are either being won or that dream is going to come to pass. Or you are being given a way of escape. Dreams never come to us out of nothing. Because if dogs are in your dream, you are being attacked sexually. If there are cats, there's a lot of witchcraft on your way. If there are snakes, the devil is after you. Anytime you see somebody dead, you are being invited to die. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, I can speak this forcefully because yesterday I showed you what witchcraft can do. That girl who was giving birth to stones, human hair, things were in her womb, and so on and so on. From one problem to another, you are a champion. Persistent poverty, even after you have given to the work of God. Somebody say, Lord Jesus, I need to be restored. I stand against evil altars. I stand against demonic strongholds. Powers of the village. Targeting my life. You will never get me. I know the truth. Things are changing. In Jesus' name. You better pray. You better pray. You better pray. You better confess. Some of us are late very many years. Satanic pollution is clear. The devil has tainted your life. Ancestral yokes is a reality. Burdens militating against our spiritual and the physical progress. You wake up, the desire you have, I want to go back to the village. Huh? I want to go back. 
to where I was born. And there is something you discover, there is something drawing you to go back. Hello. And some of our villages are not good. Huh? That's where the altars are. You were not there 400 years ago when they were dedicating the community. You know what? When you were born, you do not know who handled you. You don't know why you were given the name you were given. Huh? You just enjoy the name. My name is Wanjoy. My name is Wanjala. Huh? You need to look at the meanings of the names that were given to you. There are graves where people are speaking from. There are mountains and rocks and rivers that are talking to you. And there are things that were said about you. Huh? You know some of the ancestors when they were going, they said nobody in this village will ever see the university. Nobody here will have a stable marriage. Some of you were dedicated to the ancestors. You will never get married. You will never get married. And that's why you discover everybody has been married except you. Huh? Evil dedications. Evil dedications. You discover there are yokes. Yokes of alcohol, drugs, immorality, stealing, lying. The background experiences, you need to interrogate a little bit more where you were born. What idols were your parents worshipping? The names that were given to you. Hallelujah. The ancestral curses that were passed on to you. The covenants which were made by your people. Now, you need to take interest and inquire. If your grandfather is around, just interrogate him and say, uh -huh. your father was who? Who was your grandfather? Who was your grand grandfather? What were they known for? What were they famous for? And you may be surprised they will tell you, your great grandfather was a warrior who killed very many people. So you are linked to people who have been killing each other. Huh? Hello? You need to inquire. Who was my great grandmother? Don't be surprised to be told she was married four times. And no wonder. The family line, marriages are not stable. Inquire from your people. Why were people dying early in life? Most of the people will die in their 30s. They never get to 40. And you discover this is the pattern that is going on in your family. You are going into the village three, four times in a year to bury young people who have finished university. Powers of the ancestors trailing my life. I am not your candidates. Jump out of my life. Jump out of my life. If you study the health medical history of your clan, you discover there were people who would go innocent. There are people who would go blind. There are people that would go deaf. Hello? Women died when they were giving birth. Some never conceived. There is something behind that. Huh? People die of heart attack, kidney failure, heart failure. Some certain diseases are traceable in the family. And of course, with the modern science, they will tell you it's genetic, it's inherited. Is that where we stop? We go beyond. We go beyond. And we address the foundations. We say that which troubled my ancestors. Come on, everybody. That which troubled my ancestors cannot.
Lord trouble my life. I disconnect myself. In Jesus' name. Yeah. You'll tell me, oh no, I have a great doctor in Aga Khan in Nairobi Hospital. Uh huh. I have money to go to India. I can go to South Africa. This cannot be handled by Kenyan doctor. Let me tell you, the devil will trail you all the way. And, and until you have realized huh? when your mom got married, she had already given birth to you before your father, whom you call your father, became your father. Huh? Maybe you were, mama was raped, then you were born. So there is something you are carrying. Huh? Maybe your great grandfather, or even your grandfather, had four or five wives. And they divorced a number of them. No wonder the same thing has affected you. Huh? Unaoa, ukuza. Mama nanda na watoto. Unaolewa, unambiwa shika barabara kwenda. Huh? When the foundations are affected, what will the righteous do? What will they do? That's why we are here today. And I'm not here to scare you. I'm here to give you hope. Christ became a curse for us. Hallelujah. Christ was crucified so that we can be free. May I say that alcohol will leave you. Those drugs you are taking, they will leave you. That spirit that has been tracking you, it has destroyed three or four of your marriages, will never follow you. The poverty where you are leaking dust will not be your inheritance. Jesus, the mighty deliverer, deliver me. Lift up your hand. Right on again. Jesus, the mighty deliverer, deliver me now. Get delivered. Get delivered. There are terrible experiences in your background, rape, where people have been attacked by armed robbers. Very unusual accidents. Even yourself, you have been involved in an accident. And so on. And so on. And my brothers and sisters, I am looking at the word of God. And there's something I'm doing here. Because I know there are so many people who have a wrong understanding about warfare and the deliverance. There are those who have nothing to do with it. There are those who say, I will not be bothered. There are those who say, we leave these things until Jesus will come. Then there are those ones who are totally ignorant. And then there are those ones who believe in it, but they have also gone very extreme. Deliverance is not divination. Huh? Deliverance is not a money-making gimmick. Huh? I will never ask people to send me money for them to be prayed by me. As a matter of fact, on my television and radio programs, you never hear me asking for money. Because out there, people have classified us in the wrong manner. The book of Hosea 9, verse number 10. I read very quickly. Hosea 9 and 10. The Bible says, 
I found Israel as grapes in the wilderness, as the first ripe fruit of the fig tree. I saw your fathers at the beginning. They went to Baal, Paul. This is a God they were worshipping. Separated themselves unto the shame. They became abominations like their labor. Hello? That's what our great parents did. They worshipped the things in the forest, in the river, in the rocks, in the caves. Is that true? Hello? Others even gave human sacrifice. You know, like now when we don't have rain. If it was in the past, they could have even slaughtered one of the twins. As for Ephraim, their glory shall fly away as a bird. No birth, no pregnancy, no conception. Everybody say, that is not for me. My glory will not fly away. I will not be barren. I will have the fruit of the womb. I will conceive physically, spiritually. I will have dreams that will take me to success. Verse number 12, for even should they bring up their children, yet will I believe them. That not a man remain, who also to them, when I shall depart from them. Ephraim, as I saw him, was a tire, was a tire planted in a beautiful place. But Ephraim shall bring forth his children to the slayer. Unazawa toto unapereka wanaenda kuwawa. I have a very painful experience. One of my aunts who buried over six children. And the few that remained. They were not human beings. They were like zombies. One of them died without knowing who she was. Another one, she's just there. Saliva is coming out. She never got married. Are you hearing me? Sons have no jobs. They are wandering. And this is what we are reading in the Bible that will happen. Awataza, wakiza. Watakuwa wanazika. Watakuwa wanalia. Give them, Jehovah, what you will give. Give them a miscarrying womb and the dry breasts. You know, when a witch tells you your breasts will never suck. That is a very powerful statement from an altar which has been raised by Satan. Lift up your hand and say, I counter every curse from witches, from Satanists. I counter every evil arrow sent to my life. Backfire, 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 backfire. To the sender. Oh. 15. All their wickedness is in Gilgal. For there I hated them because of their wickedness of their doings. I will drive them out of my house. I will love them no more. Or their princes will be rebellious. Do you realize this touches economics and the politics? Huh? When the word prince is used here, it's politicians. Ephraim is smitten. Their fruit is dried up. They shall bear no fruit. Yes, though they should bring forth, yet I will slay the beloved fruit of their womb. Oh my God. The Lord is saying, Atakama mukisa, iyo mumesa itaenda. My God has rejected them because they hearkened not to him. They shall be wanderers among the nations. That's why you discover people, Kenyans are running to go to Australia, to Canada, to Britain. And some of them, the kind of work they are doing in those European countries, you will not believe. 
wandering spirit. Even there are others who will wander in Kenya. They are in Eldoret, Nand Hills, Kakamega, Kisumu, Mombasa. You will hear they are in Garissa. They have gone to Lungalunga. Am I talking things? Am I talking things? The wandering spirit in my tribe. The wandering spirit. The wandering anointing. I am not your Lord. I am not your Lord. Die by fire. Die, 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 die. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Woo. Oh, yes. In Jesus' name, you'll be very shocked. People wander from one pastor to another. From one church to another. How many churches do you have in your belt that you have been attending? I didn't like that pastor. I went to that one. I didn't like him. I went to the other one. I didn't like him. Even Gichana is a short while. I'll be gone. The wandering spirit. Huh? I am not excited to go and live in America. Look here. Somebody is over 50. He gets a green card to go and live in America. And he goes to a place where it is the coldest state. Huh? Dakota. North Dakota, South Dakota. Baridi in Akupata. It is true you are in a foreign country. But the simple question is, what are you doing in that country? Why should you suffer in that manner? And you would live comfortably in Ikoromani. You could live comfortably in Nyandarwa. Five acres. Or two acres, you begin to have greenhouses. Nasa kweka ngomu. Chaza, ile ni naona. Wandugu wa nasukuma tray. Ya wale watu wa menunua vitu kwa supermarket. Iyo ndiyo ndugu anafaa. Anasukumia wapi nyanya kupereka kwa wale. Nasukuma wiki. Na nakuambia, is he staying in a foreign country? Somebody say, that will not be my lot. I am not a wanderer. Now, please do not mistake me. I'm not against people migrating. You can migrate for very genuine reasons. You may migrate because you have the qualification. You may migrate because you are pursuing education. And when you go to that foreign country, you get your master's degree, you get your PhD, you get into the system, and you are working, and you become an investor. You are helping people at home. Ah. When I read this scripture, I saw it in the lives of many of God's people. Uh -huh. That scripture I've read, should be able to provoke us to demand restoration. Close your Bible and your notebook. Put your hand on your chest. Say whatever, whatever. I, have I have lost through evil altars, through evil. ancestral altars, I demand, I demand in the name of Jesus Restoration, 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 restoration in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the things I'm doing when I'm teaching, I'm also praying and you are getting your deliverance directly. Our time is over. These messages are recorded. They will be of great benefit.